Good to know you're still with us on The Breakfast. It's time for us to talk about something I know you must have been waiting to hear perspective on. Um, we have two guests, but we've been able to connect with one for now, and that's uh, Mr. Nelson Ikujumi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, so the conversation is about the reaction of the government to uh, the CNN uh, report on the end south, uh, the Lekki shooting that occurred on October 20. Uh, we want to get your reaction to the seeming face of the government insists that no one uh, was killed there. And then, uh, that the, I mean, the army rather did not kill anyone. And then we have the CNN reports confirming that at least one person died. Your reaction, please. Oh, yeah. Yes, my reaction is one of um, shock that almost, uh, a lot of interest have come out to pick and then. Um, Thank God that the government elected the uh, recommendations of the National Economic Council okay. with regards I, I to really that we, we have a looking at the alleged abuses of the um, uh, disbanded Mr. Kujimi, Kujimi. Special Anti-Robbery Squad, uh, SARS, of which the incident in Lekki of the 20th of October has also come in terms of reference of that panel. One is shocked that uh, the so-called footage or the so-called new documentary by uh, CNN has been piecing together old images that have been in the public for the past three or four weeks. Uh, and it tells you clearly, uh, like the government has right you know, I think CNN is on a mission. But whatever that mission will be, uh, I'm sure from what so far, uh, without a, a documentary, Mr. it is Kujini. not in the best interest of Nigerians. What, because what would one would be expect the mission? Uh, let me interject and ask you. If you don't have your... Okay, I, I think there is a ground. disconnect with the audio. We He can't seem to hear us when we try to talk to him. Uh, we'll try and sort that out and uh, we'll come back uh, with um, our guest. We're still expecting Bernard Oniga to join uh, the conversation. Um, Mr. Kujumi, can you hear me? Okay, um, let's, I, let's, let's see what we can uh, do. Let's give a little bit of a background. I watched that video twice. I watched it again a third time this morning before coming on the program. And then I read the entire statement from um, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, and the things that kept coming to my head when I read the uh, statement was the um, almost um, overwhelming um, confidence he has in the panel of inquiry investigation that is ongoing, that there would be some sort of um, um, justice from that panel. It's also, uh, what I also read was the passion for the welfare of the Nigerian security um, officials who he says are being vilified uh, by the media. And then what played on my mind as I was reading that part was that the, the, the of the, the officials, he seems to be so um, engrossed as to what their welfare is, don't seem to share that sentiment. Because since that NSAS protest, which was about not just police brutality, but improving on the welfare of our security agencies, we still see them, not one video, not two, but about more, showing that these officers are saying, I will kill you and nothing will happen. So quick example. Just after that. So a couple of quick, other things. Quick example. Um, yesterday evening, the uh, security aide to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Semi Bajapia Mila, apparently shot someone yesterday evening. Um, he put out a statement late last night saying that, you know, they were... Uh, on his way to the office and then, you know, the security agents were shooting in the air and, you know, a straight bullet hit, you know, a person, um, one of the newspaper vendors and he died. Uh, there's still, of course, obviously, it's, you know, we're, it, it feels like we're back to where we're coming from. Um, nothing has changed. If the only way that you can drive through a crowd is to sh fire live rounds, then we're still there. But one thing that I would um, speak about with regards uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, and uh, CNN is... Um, 
when you try to dispel allegations, when you say, oh, you know, they're putting out fake videos. Um, Nelson Ekujimi just said something similar, that um, CNN went back and brought back videos from, you know, two, three weeks ago and put them together, you know, to make their report. My challenge is, when you keep making statements like this, what you simply should be able to do is say, oh, these videos are fake and these are the real videos. So when you say, oh, this video is fake, it's doctored, it's, you know, it's uh, suspicious, and you don't say, but this is the real video, this is, you know, where the truth is. If you have no evidence to back the fact that this video is doctored, then nobody else, you know, nobody should believe that you, what you're saying. Nobody else should say or agree with you that that video is doctored. And I don't know how you can doctor a live video in the first okay, place. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll still talk a little more, but let's get our guests' uh, perspective. Uh, some of those pictures might not uh, be uh, very pleasant this morning, but it, uh, it's uh, from the CNN report um, that... Um, um, it's uh, causing a whole lot of controversy. Uh, there are so many issues that comes to mind when you see the government reaction uh, to uh, those, um, I mean, pictures that you just saw now. Let's bring our guests back and get their, their perspective. I understand we have Bernard Oniga. He's joining us via phone now. Uh, Bernard, I don't know if you've been following the conversation, but I want to get your quick perspective on the, the argument being put forward by the government against the report of the CNN and where you stand. Okay, I want you to confirm. You can hear me, please? Yes, we can. Yes, Go we ahead, can. Please. All right, good morning to you all, gentlemen and lady. Good morning. Okay, so um, we live in the 21st century. And we have gone beyond the age of issuing press statements as ways and means of manners of clarifying disputes. Apparently, I would say that that is the age that our 68-year-old information minister is coming from. And um, I want to believe that um, he needs to try as much as possible to keep to terms with the times and the realities of technology in 2020, which is the fact that the cable news network does not necessarily need to put a camera at any site or send a journalist to any event to be able to verify the truth or otherwise of the occurrence of events at any location in the world. So we live in an age whereby issuing press statements, like I have said, have become mundane. There's something called information technology, and there are ways of verifying the authenticity or otherwise of visual clips vis-a-vis -vis videos. Okay, so uh, let me get something from you. Are, you. are you saying that you feel that CNN did due diligence based on the reports that you saw um, as against the position of the government who say the CNN did not do due diligence when it comes and that they've uh, messed up the journalism, so to speak? What you are asking me to comment on is that if I want to put the integrity of the Nigerian government side by side with that of cable news network, I will tell you that I would choose cable news network 10 times over the Nigerian government. Bernard. I have not carried out my own personal research on those videos, but I have read and I am aware that there are technologies available at the disposal of the cable news network to have verified the authenticity of the video, of the investigative video, before it was posted. Bernard, I, CNN I to, is a responsible and a frontline news agency in the world. Bernard, it cannot Bernard Oniga, kindly hold on. Um, uh, apologies for, of course, uh, jumping in the, so abruptly. But I, I, I want you to go on, go on with your thoughts. I want you to speak on the need for you know, when, when the Nigerian government says, you know, these are unverified um, videos, uh, when it says that they, you know, are using possibly doctored videos, do you think it's necessary that the Nigerian government goes ahead to provide more authentic video footage uh, to counter that of CNN? 
Um, do you think you know that would maybe be more assuring to the Nigerian people? You know, from when they hear from the Minister of um, Information, Lai Mohammed, basically just dispel you know the CNN report. Do do you do you want them to go ahead and say, okay, now that these videos are maybe doctored, these are the real videos um, that are available? And then another question is. When people make statements, Nelson uh, 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 could you me just, you know, of course, um, said something similar, that CNN has a motive. I've also read online that CNN is trying to plunge, uh, plunge Nigeria into unrest. What is your reaction to those type of statements? Well, um, my reaction is simple, which is the fact that you don't argue with technology you provide a superior technology. That is how you argue with technology. If you claim that the video by cable news network is from the streets, it is doctored, it is not in line with journalistic ethics and all of the statements and the rants of um, the information minister and some Nigerians um, like Mr. Nelson, who feels that maybe cable news network has a sinister motive in releasing that video. Like I would simply say to them, you don't argue with facts. You pro argue with superior facts to counter facts. All right, you let's argue bring, with um, superior technology let's, let's, to let's counter give some, technology. Let's to uh, Mr. Ekujumi. Uh, Mr. Ekujumi, can you hear me? Just to confirm. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so uh, let's let's look at the issue the, that was raised by Lai Mohammed in his statement. Um, he he. He confirmed that what the army said, that they are not looking for DJ Switch, um, who was prominent during the NSARS protest for live streaming um, the um, events of that day to um, a, a large extent. And he also said that um, people that have evidence should present same to the panel of inquiry. When you just oppose that statement to what the reality is that we have a Romo Sele who just got bail, we have um, people like Mo whose accounts and um, the passport was taken, and then we have those whose accounts were frozen. Do you see sincerity in these um, supplication, or no, should I say um, request by uh, Lai Mohammed for people to come forward with information and also saying that DJ Switch um, was not being hounded by the army or the government? Well, the truth of the matter is that I, as a person, I have monitored developments with regards to this incident. And unlike my brother at the other end, who said he has not watched the video, from the video which I saw, you will see that all the footages of that videos were obtained from DJ Switch. The same DJ Switch who said 78 died, uh, and I later recounted and said 15, correct. and later said 12. Mr. So Kujimi, if, we should correct an impression now. Not all the videos were collected. Uh, we cannot independently confirm that they were collected from DJ Switch because there was one of a young man who said his feet um, he had been shot on his leg, and in case he died, that he was fighting for freedom. That could not have been um, um, gotten from DJ Switch, can it? If, if somebody can be consistently inconsistent on a single issue, I wonder why any reasonable person will believe such a character. And talking about people who have, whose accounts have been frozen, people who have been charged to court, uh, whether it corroborates the government's position that, look, we are open to uh, sincerity. I think the truth of the matter is that we operate a constitutional democracy, whereby if the authorities at any point in time feels that a citizen in the discharge of his uh, rights and responsibility as enshrined in the constitution is uh, suspected of having infringed on the law, you and I know that the reasonable thing for the authorities to do is to inv investigate such a person and apply through process and what well, do I mean by do due, you process? Believe due process? Is that was you applied. Uh, people, you, I, I, I'm you sorry to keep interjecting, um, interjecting, sir. But do you believe that due process was applied? Because we know for a fact, it's in the media, that the government did not, um, CBN did not get um, an ex parte motion 
um, authorizing the freezing of the account. They froze the account before they got the ex parte motion. Would that be following due process in your thinking? Uh, quickly what? also add the fact that Aramosella was arrested and kept in custody for nine days without being charged. Is that due process, uh, Ms. Aikujumi? Whether it is an ex parte order or not, a court of competent jurisdiction has given an order. And if we want to behave like Democrats, which we all claim we want to be, the most appropriate thing for us to do is that, oh, a court of competent jurisdiction has given an order. If you doubt it, go to another court and challenge that order, Mr. such that you defraise such um, accounts. And the, the government has come and repeatedly that, look, the government has a lot on its plates, rather than looking for one person. Uh, one DJ uh, Street. Uh, that what they are concerned you, about is finding process. out the truth. In Standing order on, you, 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 you just mentioned due process. Um, I want you to continue with, you know, with that. Um, Eremosale was held for nine, ten days without being charged. He was flown to Abuja, back to Lagos, um, still without charge. Um, it, it, would you describe that as due process? Process. Pardon? Eromosele, if you, if you remember this, his uh, story, he was granted bail eventually yesterday. Um, but prior to his being granted bail, he was arrested and he was kept in you know, police custody for about 10 days, uh, flown to Abuja, back to Nigeria. A lot of resources were you know, spent in you know, holding him um, in police custody. Would you describe that as due process? The whole due process. Well, the, the, from now, I, I would say under the law, you cannot detain somebody more than 48 hours. So but was, if you so want to detain more than the statute three forty-eight hours, you need the permission of the court. A, a prosecutor can, uh, can apply to the court that I need to keep this person with me for the next one month. But, but if you, I'm it's sure not, that you also follow the story. Did, you, did the Nigerian government or the security agencies, did the prosecutors apply to any court demanding that he be kept beyond 48 hours, um, you know, in those 10 days or maybe even more that he was held in captivity or rather held, you know, with, uh, uh, with the Nigerian police? Was that due process according to your books? So long as the police have the authority of the court to do that, I think it is due process. But if we have not in interrogated that to establish that that detention beyond the constitutionally allowed period was without the authorization of the court, then that will amount to an abuse of due process. But so far now, we have not investigated that, and we don't have the fact that, look, uh, he, he, the detention no more than the approved constitutionally required days exceeded the uh, days allowed by the Constitution. Then I, I don't think we should jump into the conclusion that... Me, um, I want to... Um, you know, move in a different direction. First of all, you know, let, let's be clear here. Um, he wasn't charged, you know, all the while to maybe about the ninth or tenth day um, that he was in police custody. Uh, there was no court, you know, ruling that granted them um, um, a, a judgment, of course, a, a permission to hold him that long. So according to your description of due process, I don't think the government was following due process there. That, but I want, to, I want you and, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Bernard to quickly speak on this. You earlier mentioned that CNN seems to have a, an ulterior motive. Um, I've also seen that CNN is trying to plunge Nigeria into unrest. I, I want your thoughts on why you believe so. Because if you remember a couple of years ago, CNN also was involved when the Chibok girls were... Uh, kidnapped. Um, and of course, they also carried out their own report. They, they put out their own, you know, um, stories. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people who felt like they were trying to plunge Nigeria into unrest or they had their own ulterior motives. So do you believe that they did back then and they do, they still do now? Um, Bernard, uh, you would also respond. Remember the role uh, the CNN reporter played? I think that was uh, during the days of the main issue where it's, you know, was when it was reported by the Nigerian government to its authorities that, look, this report was fabricated, and it led to the sacking of that CNN reporter. On, on the present uh, scenario, the CNN report, why some of us are quarreling with it is that we, when they said new documents, we thought CNN was coming up with new facts, new videos. But rather, what do we see? We saw the same old videos. That tells you that there was more to it than meets the eye. If you say you have new evidences, I'm sure you know what new means from old. If you look, if you look at your dictionary, new means something fresh. But all the videos we have seen from the report are videos that have been in the public domain. 
So it says for me, it, it's, it's worrisome that is there an agenda to drive this narrative or that this old video sought to do, but has been mired in controversy? Is there an attempt uh, to, to drive it down our throat such that we take it as the gospel truth? And for me, I think that is not acceptable because a lot of actors with regards to the lucky incident, you know, reportage and videos have been proven to be false. All a right. lot of the people that were reported Thank those you, videos were even... Uh, Bernard, let's bring in Bernard Oniga here. I, I want your response uh, to, uh, you know, same question. Uh, CNN trying to plunge Nigeria into unrest. Uh, you know, maybe we can say the same thing about Premium Times and other uh, media platforms that have, you know, carried out their own reports and put out their own stories. So go ahead, Mr. Bennett. Okay, well, um, like I have said, you don't just argue facts. You, you, you provide superior evidence to counter whatever it is you are arguing. There's what is called geospatial intelligence. So um, let me tell Mr. Nelson that um, what CNN simply did was to take the videos on the streets, just like he's claiming they are from the streets and from DJ Switch's account and all of that, and use a technology called geospatial intelligence and check the location and the time and ascertain if indeed such events occurred at a certain location and at a certain time. So let me educate Mr. Nelson that CNN did not need to provide us with a new video. What CNN did was a verification of videos that have been making the rounds. That is why I said that if we would have people in governance, we should have people who are in tandem with the realities of the times, not people who would argue with technology that is so obvious that even children play with abroad and we are at the 68-year-old minister in Nigeria is arguing with the technology. If the government of Nigeria has a problem with the independent investigative video by CNN, it has its own team of experts and it can pay a global team of experts to verify the authenticity or otherwise of that video rather than just making blanket statements and saying CNN want to plunge Nigeria into crisis. I would say rather that the government of Nigeria has either plunging Nigeria into crisis by refusing to unravel the truth of what transpired at the toll gate. All right, let me they ask you about Nigerian media now. Um, the government has said they are going to find a way to, you know, get CNN to own up for what they say is um, in unethical journalism, uh, according to the Minister of Information. I want you to, this is a foreign media, what possible sanctions could there be? And if this media, and this report was brought by um, a Nigerian media house, what are the likely scenario that we will be seeing now? Because a lot of persons are arguing that um, Nigerian journalists were not doing enough uh, for CNN to have come up with this uh, report. What could have stopped, in your thinking, um, Nigerian journalists from uh, pursuing this part? That's a very important question. The Nigerian media, as it were, today is being censored and being gagged. When the National Broadcasting Code was being released, I was screaming. It was a cause for us to all be on the street to protest. Well, but most likely because we do not understand, as at that time, the extent of the implementation of that law. So that is why we must have kept quiet as it were today. I am aware that certain media houses were sanctioned in this country. Let me tell you, as it were today in Nigeria, we may most likely be relying on media houses like CNN to be able to give us the kind of reportage we would need which will be factual and true because the average Nigerian media house has been gagged by the government. It's under serious really? attack by because the government in place. Is that a fair but, position, really? Because these same videos that, is, well, that it has been you know, put under the microscope, so to speak, by CNN, and you said they used um, some technology to identify the time, these same videos were used by Nigerian media at some point. We, we have very comprehensive report a day after the events at the Lekki um, toll gate from, um, I, I read one from the uh, Premium Times. I know that other media houses have put out reports on that day. So would it be that maybe it is the platform that the CNN has that amplified the investigation that they did? Some are saying it's a good job. Others are saying, like the government, no, it's not. Of, of, of course, the CNN is a global platform. And the image of the government in power in Nigeria, as it were today, 
it's obvious for the whole world to see when we say this is what we are going through in Nigeria. CNN has assisted and helped us in amplifying our voices to the international community and to the global community of human rights that our rights are being suppressed in Nigeria and that we can no longer tell the truth from Nigeria to the world. Rather, the world now tells the truth to Nigeria from a global platform like CNN. You also asked what kind of sanctions earlier on. I do not know in, um, in to my mind what nature of sanction the minister has in place if it is to ban CNN from airing on Nigeria Airways or whatsoever it's where you know, but I do not know. I'm sure he has lawyers and the rest who would advise him on what to do. I do not think in that direction, so I cannot come up with whatsoever sanctions it were. But you know, premium times, CNN, your news um, outlet and other local news outlets have reported on this. But of course, the Nigerian government feels that the report on CNN is an embarrassment, but it is rather to unravel the truth. So we know what is true, so we can separate the truth from the shaft and know exactly what transpired at the lucky toll on the 20th of october Quickly, in the that interest is... of time i also want to ask you um, um what would have been a better approach from the government or because you don't seem to align with the action of uh, the um uh, minister of information because in that video we saw some um i i personally hadn't seen the video of the young man who said he was shot in the leg and some other of the, uh, some other video that was in that clip um, would it be a better approach for the government to... Uh, because there were faces in that video of real Nigerians recounting their experience. Wouldn't it, it have been um, a more um, comprehensive approach if the government looked for these people to get their, in, um, their investigation, um, their own part of the story, other than asking them to go to the investigation uh, panel? Very, very well, like I have said, sincerity, integrity, this is what is an issue against the Nigerian government. There is a video out there. There are faces on the video. If we approach the people on the video, we can identify them and, and approach them to get the veracity or otherwise of the situation in which they found themselves. If it wasn't at the lucky tool, perhaps, we would be able to understand. Then the government can come out and issue a comprehensive statement and provide us with information you know, to say these videos are false. Oh, this incident happened not at the Lekki Toad. It happened at maybe to Joe Elegba or at um, somewhere, somewhere, you know, give us details, you know. But attempting to argue with videos in the 21st century and not doing so with technology is what is an issue. Right. What, would have, what I would have also expected the Minister of Information to do, the CNN has an office in Nigeria. It has its correspondence in Nigeria. It is a British company that operates mainly in the U.S., and so the diplomats are here. You can write to them and invite them and say, you have said that this is your, an investigative piece. Let us know how you arrived at this piece. And then we marry facts side by side and see the veracity or otherwise of the claim right. as against I'm, I'm attempting. Wanna... You see the attitude of the Nigerian government is also showing it out to the international community. Instead of talking, instead of dialoguing, instead of fact, fact finding, the Nigerian government is issuing threats to an international body. You right, see on, uh, the militant man, uh, disposition of the Nigerian government. Um, Nelson Kujumi, I'm coming back to you. I, I want, of course, your own thoughts on the same narrative of sanction in CNN. Uh, do you agree with the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, that CNN should be sanctioned? And uh, how do you think you know, that might play out? And also, you know, if we have other international news media come out with similar reports, do you believe that they also should be sanctioned? I, I believe that the Nigerian government, in as much as she has found fault with this documentary, she will report CNN to you know international media organizations or uh, or collaborations that CNN belongs to, as well as reporting to you know its parent uh, body at home that look, this is what your your media station is doing to us in this part of the world and you know let them take it from there uh, and you're talking about uh, the government looking for them you know that a lot of the fake news all about the the lucky incident was not you know was not on earth by the nigerian government it was even nigerians it even it was even so bad that a, a ghanaian actor was portrayed as one of the victims of the lucky incident of which that people now came out and said, no, this is not a Nigerian, this is a Ghanaian. So I don't think the Nigerian government should look for anybody. If you know you have facts to buttress whatever allegations you have 
with regards to the uh, lake incident, we we'll, uh, appeal to you that please come to the panel that has been set up to unearth the truth. It is for the truth, it's for, it's for the justice that we all crave for on this matter. So somebody saying is educating somebody about a video from a person that has been consistently inconsistent that has been changing figures uh, that we... Kindly hold on, Mr. Kujumi. This is, this is you know, I, I think I had brought this up before, um, and I'm hoping that you can really share your thoughts on this. If you think or that if you agree that the Nigerian government maybe doesn't, you know, see any truth or doesn't agree with the, um, the content, you know, in the CNN report, don't you think the Nigerian government should be able to bring about counterintelligence um, uh, against what CNN has brought out, you know, because from what you've said, the only challenge you have with the CNN video is the fact that it is, you know, videos that were already in the Nigerian space. You haven't said, you know, or given any uh, um, reasons why those videos shouldn't be trusted. Um, so I, I want to, do you think the Nigerian government should also go ahead, aside dispelling those videos and, and um, shooting them down, do you think the Nigerian government should be able to also bring out uh, counterintelligence uh, against what CNN has done. The, the, the videos are not just because they are in the public domain, but because those videos are, have been made in controversy that, no, this is not true. This is not what happened. We have we, the, those videos, as we speak, a lot of them, people have come out to debunk them, people who are private to those facts. And that is why I said, it is not the responsibility of the Nigerian government now to bring up any, any video to counter those videos. It is for the Nigerian government to allow the judicial panel of inquiry to run its... But aren't you worried about... The, the, there's been, we've been speaking to lawyers on The Breakfast and in other interviews, and they are sh they're expressing concern about the constitutionality, the legality um, around the establishment of this panel of inquiry. Um, at the end of the day, they say that it might not amount to much because they cannot implement. All they can do is recommend. Yes, even the recommendations will be a pointer to the truth. The recommendations from the panel. And you can see that you can see the quality of personnel on the panel. And you can see the quality of representation at the panel. So at the panels has been set up at the various states. But we are talking about the issues that regards to Lagos, which the CNN has brought out, those videos that have been that have been made in controversy about their authenticity, about the originality. And the CNN is still holding on to that line of thinking. But for some of us, we want to have an open mind and, and allow the panel to do its job. The Nigerian government should not you know, interfere, or else people who have already you know, uh, labeled the Nigerian government, no matter what it does, it's like giving a dog a bad name in order to hang it. So the panel right. should run its full course. Witnesses, uh, victims, their relatives, anybody that has the fact to unhurt the truth, let them come to that panel and, you know, give us the evidence. Well, in that Mr. way, I, even before I, I the panel really wanna, um, arrives at the... Um, well, Nelson, if we, if we can do this in 10 seconds, all right? Just one 10 seconds um, and your response to this. Um, you've said that it's not the responsibility of the Nigerian government to look for counter videos or counter evidence against what CNN has put out. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I keep going back to this, but if you find yourself in a supermarket... You get home two hours later and then the police comes knocking. You are arrested for stealing um, in, um, in that supermarket. There is CCTV evidence that show that you, steal, you stole rather from that supermarket. It, when you are speaking to your lawyers, would you like your lawyers to, if you believe that you didn't steal, would you like your lawyers to r go and find actual CCTV footage that show that you were innocent and you didn't steal? Or would you just tell you know, the police that that CCTV footage is very likely doctored? Okay, good. From your question now, so the Nigerian government didn't do a video recording of the incident at Lekki. Somebody did it. And that video is a question. The only counter video that can travel it has been the one that the Nigerian army has brought to the panel that they said they were at the, at the, uh, at the location, as well as the video from the uh, uh, Lekki Concessionary Company, which uh, as, a, as a person, if I'm a to have stolen at a supermarket, you know definitely I can't produce the video. 
All I will produce is that, okay, the police should do the investigation. The video said I have stolen X, Y. All right, can you say, Benjamin. can you come and search my house or do a, 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 a forensic audit we're, we're of my of movements? We're out of time for uh, this okay. segment of the conversation. We're truly out of time. It would be nice to even get uh, Bernard to uh, give us his Let's concluding thoughts, but um, we've been told to wrap up. I want to thank you both uh, very uh, warmly for sharing uh, your thoughts on the matter. Um, uh, <laughs> There's so, so many issues. I mean, um, um, I, I, I'm speechless, uh, to say the least, when, you know, you try to marry the statement and the facts of, I mean, of what we know. Um, it, it, I, I, would, I, would, I would be more, you know, um, cautious with the government if I saw that there is true commitment. I, I can't color it, even if I'm a journalist, there should be true commitment. There doesn't seem to be. What we see is statement upon statement upon statement of what is being done. But what we see seems to contradict some of the things that are being promised, some of the things that are being said uh, to be done. So if an investigation was conducted and you're unhappy with it, a narrative that you, you, you were pushing the narrative of the army um, officer who testified at the panel of inquiry. That same officer, those same a group of people rather, initially said they weren't there. So on what basis should we trust the statement that is coming from there? Initially we were there, no we weren't there. We, we shot a one blank, no um, shot blanks, no we didn't shoot um, 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 so. live bullets. Uh, governor says, oh, I didn't call them. No, I called them. It's just a back and forth. So if we do not see a sincerity in the part to seek for justice for the people who have been affected by the protests, then, I mean, it's all futile. We're, we're talking, Attacking we're talking, CNN makes no difference. We're talking life and death here. It's, it's, it's not something that should be pushed under the rug, you know, it should just be, you know, pushed aside with mere statements. Um, a couple of years ago, there was um, a video, very, very, very sad videos of um, uh, two women and, and kids um, that were, you know, on their back that were murdered in broad daylight by militants, I believe, in Cameroon. Um, you know, they, of course, for, first of all, allegations that these were Boko Haram uh, militants and, yeah, uh, and who, who killed, shot those women. Um, months later, the BBC carried out a very extensive, beautiful investigation. Um, um, could use all technology available to them to show exactly who um, the people who were guilty of those murders. Um, they presented their facts, and the government then, the Cameroonian government, I believe, you know, took action, um, got some people arrested. Um, I'm not sure what you know the state is uh, currently, but there was a fact-finding um, investigation that was carried out by the BBC on those videos. Um, the government didn't say, oh, these videos are, you know, old or they have you know, been in, in public space for so long, you know, we don't know the authenticity of these videos. Those videos were looked very, very closely into. Same thing happened with the Shiites. Um, um, international media carried out their own fact-finding mission on the videos that, you know, um, emerged from the murder of, you know, alleged 347, according to figures, um, Shiites in uh, Zaria a couple of years ago. It's very similar to what is happening with the CNN video today. Um, it's not necessary that the CNN um, brings out their own video. It's not necessary that the, f the CNN brings out, you know, fingerprints to show army uh, fingers on triggers on, on, and bullets flying from this gun to hit that person. But the CNN has done its own due diligence and carried out its own investigative report on those videos to show that these things actually did happen in this, in this place at this time. These are the bullets that were found. They were, you know, um, um, according to the CNN report, bought by the Nigerian government in Serbia in 2005. Um, I would simply want, and this is what I would expect, and that's why I asked him, Sai, could you make that same question? If you don't have, if you, if you feel these videos are doctored, as supposedly, you know, from suspicious, um, you know, places, CNN is trying to plunge Nigeria into unrest, do we have any evidence at all well, the, the much, from the uh, government the that counters these videos? The CCTV camera video that was supposed to be presented at the house, I'm, I'm at the panel hearing, I'm surprised that we don't seem to be uh, getting much um, out of it. Okay. We'll Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.